attitude. The Simatic RTU 3030C is an energy self-sufficient remote terminal unit, RTU for short. It is used wherever there is no connection to the local power grid, but where you still want to collect and transmit process data. For example, in widely distributed systems for the water supply. I will now show you how quickly and easily the RTU can be configured and put into operation. For that I will configure the device for the process monitoring via alert text message as well as a data logger. In our demo setup, the RTU is powered by two battery modules. A pressure sensor, C-Trans P310 is connected to the RTU through an analog input supplying 4 to 20 mA. The pressure sensor is powered by the RTU. In addition, a flow meter, C-Trans MAG 8000 is connected to the RTU through the impulse counter input. The RTU monitors the pressure progression at the sensor. Via the counter input, it determines the flow rate and cyclically writes it to a CSV log file. The file is then sent by email once a day. As soon as the pressure rises above a certain limit value, the RTU sends an alert text message. In doing so, the current pressure value can be included in the text message. First of all, I will configure the text message alerting. For this, I will connect to the web server of the RTU 3030C using a web browser. The DHCP server integrated into the RTU assigns an IP address to my laptop and I can address the RTU via the name cmatic.rtu. Since the RTU is to send alert text messages and emails, users have to be configured first. By means of the configured users and user groups, it is defined who will receive an alert text message or an email. In the menu Users and Groups, I will set up the users Oliver and Peter with telephone number and email address. I will create the user group Alert Text Messages and assign the users Oliver and Peter to it. Oliver and Peter will now receive all the messages that are directed to this user group. Since the RTU uses mobile communications, I will enter the mobile communications access data. In the menu WAN, Mobile Wireless Settings, I will enter the PIN number, as well as the so-called APN of the SIM card. Now I will set the operating mode of the RTU. The update mode determines in which cycle the inputs are read, that is, how often the RTU queries the data from the sensors. A suitable value is, for example, 60 seconds. This means that the RTU changes from sleep mode to update mode every 60 seconds and then reads the current pressure from the pressure sensor. Due to the relatively long intervals of 60 seconds, the RTU saves a lot of energy and can therefore be operated for several years without the battery change. Now I will set the communication mode. I will define in which time grid the RTU establishes the mobile connection for the transmission of the collected data. Since an established mobile connection causes the greatest power consumption, the communication mode should be configured in as long a cycle as possible. For comparison, in sleep mode, an RTU has a typical power consumption of just 2 mW. In update mode, it's approximately 500 mW. In communication mode, it's up to approximately 1.5 watts. For the RTU to have the lowest possible power consumption, I will set the communication mode to, for example, 24 hours. In the event of an alert, though, the RTU can immediately switch to the communication mode to promptly send the alert message. We will see how this is done later in the program section. In order for the RTU to be synchronized with the current time, I will configure a public NTP server. Now I will configure the tags of the peripheral inputs of the RTU. I will activate the digital input 0, which counts the pulses of the flow meter. 
For this, DIO is set to Usage Meter. Since it is a consumption meter, I'll specify the conversion factor. One pulse corresponds to 5 cubic meters. Now I will activate the analog input 0, to which the pressure sensor is connected. I will assign the name pressure to this process value and activate the input by ticking the checkbox. As measurement type, I will choose two wire with 4 to 20 milliamperes. For an accurate measurement, I still need to enter the settling time of the sensor. This is the time that the sensor requires past the switch on time to provide a stable and valid measurement value. Please always refer to the datasheet of the sensor used to obtain the settling time. The settling time of our pressure sensor is 10,000 milliseconds. Next I will define the measurement range. Sensor value 4 to 20 milliamperes. Process value 1000 to 4000 millibar. Now I will set up a flag bit for the alert status. To do so, I will activate the first flag in the tab Digital Memory Bits and name it Pressure Alert. I then create the text message in the menu Tag. In the tab Text, I will enter the text. Name Pressure Alert Text Message. The names in square brackets are placeholders. Here you can specify to have the current pressure value or process value and the current time inserted into the text message. Now I will switch to the menu Program and add a program block. I will select the function block Threshold Value Switch. As input I will select the analog input 0, that is the pressure value Pressure. The upper threshold is 1200 millibar, the lower threshold is 1100 millibar. As soon as the red pressure exceeds 1200 millibar, the alert flag pressure alert is set. Then I will insert another program block. I select the text message block. As recipient group, I will define the previously configured user group alert text messages. With that, our two users, Oliver and Peter, will receive the alert text message with the previously configured text block Pressure Alert Text Message. As trigger for the text message send block, I will select the flag Pressure Alert. For the text message alert to be sent right away, I will set the parameter Send Immediately to True. The RTU thus immediately switches to the communication mode in the event of a critical pressure increase to promptly send the alert text message. It therefore does not wait until the regular communication mode is activated every 24 hours. This concludes the configuration for the text message alerting. If I now increase the pressure at the pressure sensor, the RTU will detect this and generate an alert which it sends immediately. The text message contains the current pressure value as well as the date and time. Now I will show you how to configure the data logging and the sending of the CSV log file by email. The recorded flow rate together with the current pressure is to be entered into the CSV log file. The CSV log file is then to be sent once a day to the already established users Oliver and Peter. For the email, I will create the text body. Then I will create a recipient group for the log file. The group is called CSV Logging and the users Peter and Oliver are assigned to it. Now I will activate CSV Logging on the RTU 3030C. A CSV log file is to be created daily and then sent to the two recipients, Peter and Oliver, by email. In order for the two process values to be written to the CSV logging, I have to activate the data logging at both inputs. Activate data logging for the measurement value from the flow meter at the impulse input 0. Activate data logging for the pressure measurement at the analog input 0. Finally, 
the email client has to be activated on the RTU. I'm using a Gmail account for sending emails. The RTU will now email the log process values in the form of a CSV log file once a day. As you can see, the web-based configuration of the Simatic RTU 3030C is very simple. In just a few minutes, you can configure the RTU to send alert text messages and to function as a data logger. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.